If you've been on the fence on buying a Pure 500 for your PWG N55 powered BMW and you want to see if it's worth it or not or how hard it is to uh, install, then definitely stick around as I will show you the whole process, the difference in the compressor wheel, all the challenges that I faced when installing the turbo and performance side of it. Is it really worth it or not? And how this thing sounds. Welcome back to the E9X channel. What, what are we doing today? Well, as you can see, the turbo is out. Now, I wouldn't be a BMW owner if I didn't upgrade my turbo and did performance mods, right? Initially, the first thing that motivated me to pull out this turbo was that I was getting a lot of wastegate like sound or rattle. And fortunately, I knew that N55s didn't really make, didn't really have any wastegate rattle like at all. So like, I'm, I'm really finding this weird and stuff. So I pull it out, I play around with it. There's not that much whiskey to play, which should I be happy? I guess I should, but it still doesn't answer my thing because like clearly the car shouldn't sound like that. So I pulled the turbo out and I remember hearing that for the wastegate to fully close on pneumatic actuated wastegates, it takes uh, 5.9 or six uh, inches of mercury to fully close the wastegate. If you don't know inches of mercury, is essentially a, a measurement when you're pulling vacuum and as you can see i'm i'm hooked up on the pneumatic actuator right now and so you can pull so as you can see right here the these two things the wastegate is closed you can clearly see there's still it's not fully closed there's still some play in it right so it got me a question. Why is the wastegate not properly set? Did someone play around with it? Is this a junkyard turbo? I, I don't know. You know like, like this is the turbo that came on the car and I really don't know what, what would have happened because like clearly this is not correctly aligned. Clearly something's not aligned correctly. I just don't know why it would have happened. But now I'm in this dilemma. I have the wastegate replacement kit, you know, uh, that you can buy online. Should I replace it or not? So overall, there's not that much play either. I'd be surprised if that was the play that would cause that much sound. Well, let's adjust the wastegate and then we'll reevaluate. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, this is 10 millimeter. Don't look too rusty. We have to go slowly though, because I have heard some horror stories of people breaking off the shaft and then you're kind of fucked because the actuator's broken. Let's try for a wrench. All right, so we're gonna heat this up a bit and uh, let's see if it loosens up a bit. Let me just take out this gasket first. Come on. Okay, there you go. Huh. Oh yes, he did work. So now we're moving this nut. lose patience well i think i know why the nuts didn't move at all it was so seized that it just snapped off completely and trust me i went really slowly i used a ton of heat it was like it was glowing red i went really slowly i had a bunch of lube on it and it still snapped now i'm sure out of luck i need it i need an actuator like right now we're still going to remove this part but i need to find an actuator now i'm not going to touch anything because it's super hot but like as you can see it just completely sheared off okay well that didn't go to plan but let's just keep going for the moment i ordered a new actuator let's remove these coolant lines i'm pretty sure you can reuse these bolts they're stuck on there all right come on get out there you go that's one coolant line out you're stubborn, aren't you? All right, both coolant lines are off. This one's quite tricky, and I actually broke this bracket, but I might be able to weld this with uh, aluminum after. So now we can remove the actuator. Okay. 
There you go, there's our broken uh, actuator. All right, well, I took the executive decision to just not even try to remove the oil lines. I'll just take the bolts that I need, and then we're gonna try to uh, separate the two halves because I already have the new oil lines. Am I gonna regret not getting new pool lines? I don't know. I was trying to untighten it. We really don't want this clamp to break because there's no replacement for that one. Slowly. There was no getting that out. There was no way I was getting that out. All right, we can we can definitely do something with like a bolt or something. We can definitely do something. Okay, well, what are the odds that? Oh my God, no way. I guess I thought it was gonna be seized up together, but I guess not. This got off relatively easy but now we have a couple of things that we have to figure out now since everything's broken we can leave everything on here because i won't be using it yeah this turbine spins freely it spins really good this turbo is still good but all right so to show you all the difference on the compressor side to show you the difference of size what i did is i measured well i measured it with my micrometer right here and we're gonna go compare uh, inside with my Pure 500, how much bigger it is. So as you can see here, I was just showing uh, how uh, I measured it. So obviously took the biggest size right here that we could measure, roughly 64.2 millimeters. And we'll here, by removing the two 3 8 sizes uh, lengths, we could get a compressor size of roughly 46 millimeters, which is um, roughly yeah, the same number that is stated online. So this is for a PWG turbo. That's the size of the compressor. It's absolutely minuscule. Then you take the Pure 500 size. Obviously it's the same thing since it's a uh, OEM style core, so everything fits OEM. And while measuring, as you can see, only half of my quarter inch drive fits. So I roughly estimated um, just a full length of a quarter inch socket so 66.4 millimeters roughly and as you can see the compressor size 58 millimeters that's a massive jump and i personally think this should have came stock on the n55 now i'm not saying i'm gonna make a thousand horsepower with this turbo but this should have came on this car especially if you're just a type of person that does like a stage two tune or whatever like this is perfect perfect for it in my mind it's not worth it to risk it and also i kind of discovered my welder is really shit and i don't know if i'll trust my welds at this point right here i'm just gonna leave it be for now to be honest okay let's get to assembling this turbo first of all what you want to do is you're gonna notice but i don't think you'll see it on camera maybe a bit there's a little dowel there's a little pin right here and why would bmw throw well, has that even the upgraded ones you can simply just align that pin right there and that way you can just align your turbo i was worried initially by this little plate right here but this is going to get held down by the exhaust turbo manifold align it with the dowel you want to get your clamp and now just take your clamp put it around and now i just want to align this clamp correctly make sure it's properly seated i got replacement bolts because well the other one shattered so you just want this to well shoot straight up like this and i got stainless steel bolts uh for replacement just hoping that it will never rust which it shouldn't but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna tie this up first and then i'll put the second nut simply just to uh, lock it in okay. we'll just add second nut onto it should be able to spin it freely and this. Now we're going to install the diverter valve right here, or our BMW calls the cutoff, cutoff valve. So I just got a new one right here. Um, you don't have to change it, but these can fail over time with high mileage. So I mean, I'm already in there, so might as well. There you go. And this again has a, a locating pin right here. So this should always go into the same spot. So this is OE Pureberg. I also got new bolts. Uh, that come with Loctite, but 
I'm pretty sure you can just reuse the old ones, if ever. You have to torque these at a whopping seven Newton meters. Seven. That's the cutoff valve installed. Now, next uh, major thing I do need to put back is the bracket holding the holding the pneumatic actuator. As you can see, I forgot to order these bolts, but I think we can just simply reuse them. Let's just put the bracket back on. You can see there are witness marks on the bracket right here. So just align your bolts with these witness marks. I got a new pneumatic actuator. And there's essentially a way to set your pneumatic wastegate. I'll show you this. Just fit it in here. You should put your knot as far as you can. That way you can just put your wastegate however you want it. So now what you want to do to set your pneumatic wastegate correctly, uh, what you want to do is you want to fully close your wastegate. So we're going to pull back our little gun and we're going to pull six inches of mercury. So now I'm at six inches. What you want to do is fully close your wastegate and now you want to adjust your nuts. I've made a terrible discovery. This little vacuum pump might have been just completely trash. Cause I was I was realizing like I was pumping and I was getting to like maybe three, four inches of mercury and nothing was moving. Absolutely nothing. And then once I got to like five, it started moving just a slight, just slightly. And so I think now that now that I know this. I think that maybe the other wastegate was like properly assembled, which would make sense because I was making boost. So I got a B here and maybe a more reliable gun, a mighty vac. So we're at six inches of mercury and it's closed. And as you can see, so everything's working fine. This new actuator is working great. Hear me out. This is why I didn't do the repair, the wastegate repair, because you need to weld, okay? And my welder is really shitty. Look at this. The weld, the weld literally just snapped. I don't trust my welder enough to hold the wastegate right here. Let's just test it again. We're at six. Properly tight now. Now we can just. That's our wastegate properly set. Okay, last thing are the oil lines. I have new oil lines. Uh, you could probably reuse them, but mine were completely seized on the, the old turbo. So I'm really happy I got new ones. You have a oil drain, it goes at the bottom of the turbo. There's only really two ways you can install it. Essentially it just goes uh, like this. Why am I changing these? You have no way to tell if your oil lines are clogged or have shit in it. So I'd say it's rather, it's better to be safe than sorry. So again, use a T30. Again, let's just put a bit of lubricant. These are the older warnings. These are the old uh, lines. With this coolant line, it goes in like this. It goes in first. You take the other one, put it in like this. So as you can see right here, the secondary coolant line will go over it and then the overlap is what I was able to do with aluminum. this let's put the other oil line in so this oil line goes in like this yeah, this one's a little tricky to fit in but and so now every single little bolt is torqued at eight newton meters that's the turbo fully assembled now sound wise i will i will give it to them the pure 500 sounds amazing it has a whole lot more induction noise performance wise you can run it without a tune like on stock tune because everything fits uh in the stock oem manifold now as you can all see i'm wearing a bit more clothes it's a bit colder outside there's no more leaves on the trees uh, so it's been a while since i installed it since i originally filmed the video which was like in july i even have my amazing winter tire setup but i'm here to tell you guys that six months later after driving and testing it this turbo feels amazing i would honestly recommend it as a 
OEM Plus kind of upgrade for your turbo. Are you gonna make a thousand horsepower? Definitely not. That's why they call it Pure 500. But you will make some great performance. And I would argue it brings you a bit closer to a stock B58 off the shelf map performance. So it's pretty good. It's, I would say that's the biggest issue with these uh, PWG N55s is that the turbo compressor is incredibly small compared to the EWG and the B58 compressors wheels. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out and uh, hope to do more projects on the U92. See you guys later.